Welcome to Unit 12, Video 3, Synthesis and Decomposition. By the end of this video, you should be able to recognize synthesis and decomposition reactions, and you should be able to predict the products of a synthesis or a decomposition reaction given the reactants. A synthesis reaction is a reaction in which a compound is formed from two simpler reactants. The general scheme is reactant A plus reactant B yields a product made up of A and B. For example, when solid carbon reacts with oxygen gas, they combine to produce CO2 gas. A decomposition reaction is exactly the opposite. This is when a compound is broken down into simpler components. This is often accomplished by heat, electric current, or a catalyst, since decomposition doesn't generally happen on its own. The scheme here is the exact opposite of a synthesis reaction. In this case, a reactant made up of A and B breaks down into A and B as the products. For example, when an electric current is run through liquid water, liquid water breaks down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Notice here I've written an electron symbol in the arrow. It actually belongs above the arrow, that's just hard to type. When you see an electron symbol above the arrow, that indicates that electricity was used to accomplish the decomposition. Likewise, we can represent heat using a triangle above the arrow. The triangle above the arrow indicates that heat was used to accomplish the decomposition. And finally, we can write the name of the catalyst above the arrow, indicating the catalyst was used to accomplish the decomposition. Here's three reactions for you to try. Determine which ones are synthesis and which ones are decomposition. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice that the two decomposition reactions start with one reactant and yield two products, whereas the synthesis reaction starts with two reactants and yields one product. We can also predict the products of a synthesis reaction. When a metal and a nonmetal react in a synthesis reaction, we can determine the products by using the most common charges on the ions involved to determine the formula of the product. Then we balance the equation. For example, when solid sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas, we get sodium chloride. We have to first determine the formula for sodium chloride. You should know that sodium's most common charge is plus positive 1, and chlorine's most common charge is negative 1. This gives us a product of NaCl, which, as I'm sure you know, is a solid at room temperature due to its very high melting point. Notice that the product here is not simply produced by putting together the two symbols from the reactants. We have to take into consideration the ratio in which these atoms or ions will combine. Now we have to balance our equation. We have one sodium on each side, so we're good there, but two chlorines on each. So to balance, I'm going to add a 2 in front of my NaCl to give me two chlorines on the right and two chlorines on the left, and then a 2 in front of the Na to give me two sodiums on the left and two sodiums on the right. This equation is now complete and balanced. Likewise, when a compound decomposes into a metal and a nonmetal, we can predict these products as well by using the reverse logic. First, we determine the most common form of each component. In other words, is it diatomic or is it not? And then we balance the equation. For example, here calcium oxide is heated until it decomposes. This is going to give us calcium and oxygen. Calcium exists as a solid because it's a metal, and it's not diatomic. Oxygen, as you know, is a Hofbrinkle, so it's a diatomic gas, so we get O2. So our products are calci solid calcium metal and oxygen gas. Now we need to balance the equation. I have two oxygens on the right, so I need to put a 2 in front of my CaO to give me two oxygens on the left. Now. I need to balance my calciums by putting a 2 in front of calcium. This equation is now complete and balanced. Here's some to try on your own. Pause the video here and predict the products of these synthesis and decomposition reactions. 
Be sure to practice balancing them when you're done. When you come back, I'll reveal the balanced answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice in each case I had to consider the charges on the ions in the synthesis reactions in order to predict the formula of my product before I balanced the equation. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned how to recognize synthesis and decomposition reactions. Synthesis reactions take two reactants to produce one product, and decomposition reactions take one reactant to produce more than one product. Then we learned how to predict the products of a synthesis or decomposition reaction given the reactants.